Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. God loves you. God wants to bless you and prosper you, but you have to respond in faith. I was able to take that, believing it, and move ahead and operate in giving, believing for a harvest and getting harvest every time. Once I did that, I made more money than ever. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on money, on finances, but specifically financial stewardship. I just started this series last Monday, and for Monday through Thursday's broadcast, what I did was just emphasize that you've got to get the mentality that you are a steward of God's resources and not an owner of your own resources. I think that that's critical. That is just really, really, really important. And I hadn't got time to go back through all of that, but that was the first teaching in this set. There's actually six teachings in this set, and this is a DVD set right here. And the first uh, series is entitled, What is a Steward? That's what I dealt with on Monday through uh, Thursday. Today, I'm beginning to start talking about that prosperity's first step is to start being faithful in this area of stewarding what God has already given you. And I started uh, on Monday of this last week using Luke chapter 16, verse 1, where Jesus gave a parable about a man who was an unfaithful or an unjust steward. And so that parable goes through verse 8. Then in verse 9 is Jesus' application to us and how this applies to us. And I'm going to deal with this next week on my program, so I'm not going to get into this right now, but this is a powerful teaching. What I want to focus on is in verse 10. This is uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 10, and here's what Jesus said. It said, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, that's just talking about money, who then will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? I mean, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hold to the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And anyway, I'm going to say a lot more things about this, but the point I'm wanting to get across, Jesus was saying that if you aren't faithful in that which is least, then you won't be faithful in greater things. And you know, we take this often and we apply it to all kinds of things besides money. And there is a truth there. Matter of fact, in our Bible college, we have students come in who feel called to the ministry and they have a vision of pastoring a thousand member church. But some of them aren't willing to work in the nursery. They aren't willing to clean the toilets. They aren't willing to mow the grass. They just want to go straight to being the pastor of a thousand member church, but they aren't going to willing to apprentice they aren't willing to be a youth pastor, an assistant pastor, or whatever. And we will often use these exact passages of Scripture to say, you have to be faithful in that which is least before God will commit to your trust true riches. You know, I had a man come to me actually one time, and he gave me all of these statistics. He had done a lot of research, and he showed me that the youth in Colorado Springs were not, uh, didn't have a place to go. There wasn't a positive environment. And so many of them were just out here doing drugs and doing other things. He had an old Kmart building that he wanted to buy for $2 million. He was going to turn it into a youth facility and they were going to have skateboard things. They were going to have all kinds of stuff, but it was all going to be in a Christian environment where he could impact the youth. And anyway, uh, the, the stats that he had, the um, need existed. Uh, this old building would have made a good place for it. And anyway, there was a lot of good things about what he was saying. But I have just learned Mark chapter 4, I believe it's around verse 28. It says that there's first the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn in the ear. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says you 
Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. There's steps and stages. There's growth. And I told this man, I I began to ask him, I said, so what you're saying about the youth is very good. Have you ever ministered to the youth? Have you ever been a part of a youth group? Have you ever led a youth group? Have you ever done a Bible study? Have you done anything? This guy had never ministered to anybody. He didn't even minister one-on-one to people. He was born again, but he had no ministry experience. He had never apprenticed. He had never learned anything. And anyway, I just told him, I said, I can guarantee you this is not God. I said, the need is there, and maybe God has given you a vision of what will come in the future, but right now, this isn't going to work. And he was very disappointed. Like, how could you say that? And I said, because first the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn in the ear, then the good, the acceptable, the perfect will of God. If you aren't faithful in that which is least, God isn't going to give you authority and and responsibility for something greater. I said, you go out and get involved in a youth group and start doing something and then come back and tell me after you've gained experience, after you've started learning how to cooperate with God and you see the power of God flow through you, then go out and do something like this. But see, there's people that want to just skip all of these other steps. Jesus is saying, if you aren't faithful in that which is least, you won't be faithful in that which is much. If you haven't been uh, faithful over a little thing, who's going to commit unto you greater responsibility? Nobody in their right mind. And so we take these verses and we apply them to things just like what I've explained. And that is true. It is a true statement. But here's what I want to point out. In context, if you read this in context, Jesus is saying that if you haven't been faithful in that which is least, is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. Did you know that this is talking about money? And what this is saying is that trusting God in the area of finances is the least use of your faith. It's the least use of trusting God. And this comes as a total shock to most people. I mentioned it earlier in the week that a guy one time heard me teaching on radio about finances and became livid and threatened to sue me because he says, you shouldn't be using radio time to talk about something as trivial, as unimportant as money. This is, once you become a mature Christian, maybe you could talk about that, but you ought to be talking about just how to get saved and the basic things. Jesus is saying, that trusting God in this area of finances is the least use of your faith. And if you can't do that which is least, then you can't do that which is greater. You know, you can't jump from the ground up to the top uh, rung on a ladder. You have to take the bottom rung and just start working your way up. If you can't jump three feet, I can guarantee you, you can't jump 30 feet. If you can't lift 10 pounds of weight, well, then I can guarantee you, you can't lift 100 pounds of weight. If you can't walk one mile, you can't walk 10 miles. I think everybody understands this. But when it comes to spiritual things, we want to skip past finances. And, oh God, I'm believing you to heal my cancer. And yet you haven't even believed God that he will reward you when you give financially. You haven't started trusting him in the area of finances, but you're going to trust him for cancer. You're going to trust him for the healing of your marriage. You're going to trust him to give you a career, or you're going to trust him to put you into ministry and reach all these people, and yet you can't trust him in this area of finances. Can you see that what Jesus is saying, that if you can't do that which is least, And trusting God in finances is the least area of trusting. That's what Jesus is saying in context. I'm going to teach on this more, and I'm going to say this over and over, but this is saying that trusting God with your finances is the least use of your faith that you can get. And yet to most people, oh, this is a great thing. This is for those that are super saints. This is for those that are totally mature. I'm just a baby Christian. I'm I'm looking for my healing of my body. I need to get off drugs and get off alcohol. I need to get my marriage fixed. I don't want to worry about trusting God in finances. You know what you're doing? If you can't trust him in this area of finances, you haven't developed your faith to be able to trust him in something greater. 
This is huge what I'm saying right here. And if you're listening, this could be answering your question. There are some of you that are fighting cancer, and I mean in the natural, you've got a death sentence, and you're going to die. And you're trying to believe God, and yet it's a struggle, and I just can't understand why it's not working. Are you trusting God in this area of finances? Are you giving tithes? Are you giving offerings? Have you adopted this attitude that I was trying to get across where it's financial stewardship? It's not yours, it's God's, and you're going to do what God tells you to do? Or are you sitting there and just holding on and saying, no, I need this money. I can't trust God in this area. If you can't trust God with your finances, this is a direct hindrance to you trusting God in all of these other areas that are much more important. I know that some of you, this is a brand new wrinkle in your brain. You have never had this thought cross your your mind before. You have never thought that I've got to start trusting God in finances. You, you just push that aside, and yet you're trying to believe for the healing of your body, for the healing of your marriage, which are infinitely more important than just your financial thing. If you can't do that which is least, you can't do that which is greatest. That is just so simple. You know, if I can't jump three feet, you ought to take all the money you've got and put it on some bet that if I can't jump three feet, I guarantee you I can't jump 30 feet. That would just be wisdom. And yet, here you are, you aren't trusting God in the least. Jesus said trusting Him in finances is the least use of your faith. You know, I ministered in Yucaipa, California many, many years ago. And I was, um, I was going to minister on something else, and all of a sudden, God just brought these things to my mind. And this is what I focused on for about an hour and a half. I MINISTERED ON TRUSTING GOD IN THE AREA OF FINANCES IS THE LEAST USE OF YOUR FAITH. AND I I SPOKE ON THIS, AND I MEAN, IT WAS A GOD-ORDAINED DEAL. THE PEOPLE, THERE WAS PROBABLY THREE OR FOUR HUNDRED PEOPLE IN THIS SERVICE IN Yucaipa, CALIFORNIA, AND I MEAN, THEY JUST RECEIVED. THERE, IT WAS SUPERNATURAL. I COULD TELL PEOPLE WERE GETTING IT. AND DID YOU KNOW, AFTER I MINISTERED ON THIS, I THINK IT'S IRRESPONSIBLE to minister on these truths. You know, the Bible says faith without works is dead. To minister on these truths and then not give people an opportunity to act in agreement with what they've just heard is irresponsible. So after I preached on finances and on trusting God in the area of finances being the least use of your faith, I gave people an opportunity to give in an offering. And I know that immediately people are skeptical and saying that the reason you preached on this is so that you could get my money. And so to do away with that, I said, I'm going to take this offering up, but I'm going to give it to the pastor of the church. I'm not taking it. I'm not going to get an offering tonight. I'm giving it to the church. So that would hopefully put to rest people's criticism that I was doing this for selfish reasons. And so anyway, I took up this offering. And as they were passing the buckets, I was sitting there waiting on them to get through with the offering. And the Lord just spoke to me, and He says, Now look what happened. Because people have trusted me in the least, now you're going to see some greater things happen. And I got up, and I mean miracles started happening. I think it was, it was either two deaf people or two blind people. I forget now which it was. It's been a long time ago. But it was miraculous. We saw either deafness our blindness just instantly healed like that. And then other people started coming up, and we saw people healed of arthritis and just all kinds of things, and miracles started happening. And there were some people there who weren't born again, and because they saw such the, the power of God in manifestation, people started running to the front. And without me giving an invitation, I had two people come up and say, can we get born again? We want to make Jesus our Lord. And we started seeing people born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was just a runaway meeting. I mean, miracles happened. People were saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was great. And you know what caused it all? People started trusting God in this area of finances, the least use of their faith. And once that happens, it's like opening up a door. It opens up a door to everything else. And there are some of you watching this program right now that you need healing in your body. You need your marriage healed. You're fighting depression and discouragement, and you're trying to believe God for all of these other things, but you haven't started trusting Him 
in the area of finances. And you probably have never connected these dots and seen these things, but I'm telling you that if you can't do that which is least, this is the reason your faith isn't working for healing, for your marriage, for deliverance, for joy and peace and other things like this. You've got to start on the bottom rung of the ladder. This is baby stuff. This is Christianity 101. This is some of the simplest stuff. This isn't just for people who want to be fanatics and full-time uh, Christians and stuff like this. This is for a baby Christian. You need to start trusting God in this area of finances. The same God who said, by His stripes you were healed, and all things are possible to him that believes, and on and on you could go with promises. The same God that gave those promises said in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. The same God who promised healing and, and peace and marriage, uh, marriages being healed and all of these things, the same God who made those promises is the same God who said that when you give, it's going to be given back unto you. And if you don't trust those promises about financial prosperity, and that when you give, you aren't going to have less, you're going to have more because God will multiply it back. If you can't trust those promises, let me just say this in love, but you are deceiving yourself to think that you're trusting the promise that by His stripes you're healed. You're deceiving yourself to trust that my God will supply all of your need and stuff. You've got to start trusting in this area of finances. Let me say it this way. I know thousands of people, as I've traveled and ministered for over 51 years now, and I have met thousands of people, and I, I love people that come to my meetings that are in the churches that I go to. I'm not saying that I dislike these people, but there are some people that are just marginal Christians. They, at the moment, are coming to church. They're seeking God. But, you know, I don't know if I come back in a year's time, I don't know for sure that they're going to be there because they're just, they're just barely inside the front door. They aren't mature. They don't have stability in their life. And if sickness was to come, they might just renounce the whole thing and walk away. I know lots of people like that. And nearly every one of those persons are people that have not yet proven the Word of God being accurate in this area of finances. They may give occasionally, but they aren't committed, faithful givers. On the other hand, I know thousands of people that are mature Christians that I've seen over the years, and even if they experience a death, even if they get a death sentence given them about some sickness, if they experience some problem, I just know that those people are mature enough that nothing is going to talk them out of their faith with God. And it just so happens that all of those people are people that are faithful, committed givers. They are people that have proven the Word of God about prosperity by acting on it. So it's no coincidence that people that I can trust, and I know that they're going to be able to weather whatever storm Satan throws at them, those people have become faithful in this area of giving. They have learned to trust God in their giving. People that I don't have that confidence in, they may, they may be born again and they may love God to a degree, but they aren't mature, they aren't stable, they aren't going to be able to last when storms come against them. Nearly without exception, those people are not givers. They have not proven this area. I don't believe it's just coincidence that people that are unstable and cannot weather storms have not trusted God in this area of finances. People who are mature, I can guarantee you, every one of them have crossed this hurdle. It's just a foundational truth. This is what Jesus is saying. If you aren't faithful in that which is least, talking specifically about money, then you aren't going to be faithful in something greater. And because of that, if you haven't been proven yourself faithful in this area of finances, God isn't going to commit unto you greater responsibility. This is something that you can't go around. You can't bypass this. You can't just jump from the ground all the way up to the top ladder, rung on a ladder. You have to, you have to get on this first rung, that first step. The first step in prosperity 
IS RECOGNIZING THAT USING YOUR FAITH TO TRUST GOD THAT HIS PROMISES ABOUT PROSPERITY ARE TRUE. THAT IS THE FIRST STEP OF PROSPERITY. THIS ISN'T THE LAST STEP. THIS ISN'T FOR THE SUPER SAINT. THIS IS FOR BABY CHRISTIANS. IT'S BABY STUFF. AND YOU KNOW, WE'VE GOT BILLIONS OF PEOPLE ALL AROUND THIS PLANET THAT CAN VIEW MY TELEVISION PROGRAM. AND I CAN GUARANTEE I'M TALKING TO CHRISTIANS AT ALL DIFFERENT LEVELS OF GROWTH AND MATURITY, BUT I KNOW THAT THERE ARE MILLIONS OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT YOU ARE WANTING TO GO ON AND YOU'RE WANTING TO SEE HEALING, YOU'RE WANTING TO SEE YOUR MARRIAGE HEALED, YOU'RE WANTING TO SEE JOY AND PEACE, YOU'RE WANTING TO BE USED AND BLESSED OTHER PEOPLE, AND YET YOU'VE NEVER TRUSTED GOD IN THIS AREA OF FINANCES, AND YOU JUST SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER HAVE BYPASSED THAT. I BELIEVE GOD HAS SUPERNATURALLY CAUSED YOU TO TUNE INTO THIS PROGRAM. THE LORD IS TRYING TO SHOW YOU THAT THIS IS SOMETHING YOU CAN'T AVOID. YOU NEED TO START TRUSTING GOD. AND I'M NOT TALKING ABOUT JUST TRUSTING GOD AND GIVING WHEN IT'S CONVENIENT, WHEN YOU HAVE EXTRA, AND IF THE PROMISES OF GOD WEREN'T TRUE, YOU COULD DO WITHOUT IT, AND and SO IT'S NO RISK TO YOU. NO, I'M TALKING ABOUT THAT YOU, IF YOU ARE IN A CRISIS SITUATION, IF YOU ARE STRUGGLING FINANCIALLY, IF IT'S GOING TO BE A MAJOR PROBLEM FOR YOU TO START TAKING A PORTION OF WHAT GOD HAS GIVEN YOU AND GIVING IT BACK UNTO HIM, YOU ARE THE VERY PERSON THAT NEEDS TO TRUST GOD RIGHT NOW. YOU NEED TO STEP OUT AND START BELIEVING GOD. AND YOU NEED TO DO IT NOT JUST OCCASIONALLY WHEN YOU, IF YOU GIVE, YOU'VE GOT ENOUGH, it'll, it, YOU'LL MAKE IT ANYWAY. NO, YOU NEED TO GIVE IF YOU ARE IN A CRISIS SITUATION. IF YOU REALLY NEED THAT MONEY, YOU NEED TO START GIVING NOW. YOU NEED TO START TRUSTING GOD NOW. THIS WILL OPEN UP THE WINDOWS OF HEAVEN. OVER IN MALACHI CHAPTER 3, VERSE 10, IT SAYS, BRING YE ALL THE tithes INTO THE STOREHOUSE, AND PROVE ME NOW HEREWITH, SAITH THE LORD, AND SEE IF I WON'T OPEN UP THE WINDOWS OF HEAVEN AND POUR YOU OUT A BLESSING THAT YOU WILL NOT HAVE ROOM ENOUGH TO RECEIVE IT. MAN, THAT'S POWERFUL. WHEN YOU START GIVING, IT STARTS A SUPERNATURAL FLOW. THIS IS THE REASON THAT THE BIBLE LIKENS GIVING TO PLANTING SEEDS, BECAUSE SEEDS, IF YOU GIVE, IF YOU SOW THAT SEED IN THE GROUND, IT COMES BACK UNTO YOU A HUNDREDFOLD IN THIS LIFE. WHEN YOU START GIVING, IT STARTS A SUPERNATURAL FLOW TOWARDS YOU OF GOD'S ABILITY. BUT IF YOU ARE NOT A GIVER, YOU MAY NEED HEALING, YOU MAY NEED YOUR MARRIAGE HEALED, YOU MAY NEED JOY AND PEACE AND DELIVERANCE, BUT I GUARANTEE YOU, IF YOU HAVEN'T DONE THAT WHICH IS LEAST, YOU WILL NOT SEE YOUR FAITH WORK FOR THAT WHICH IS GREATEST. IF YOU CAN'T LIFT FIVE POUNDS, YOU CAN'T LIFT A HUNDRED POUNDS. YOU GOT TO START WHERE YOU ARE. AND I'M TELLING YOU, STARTING IN THIS AREA OF TRUSTING GOD IN YOUR FINANCES IS BABY STUFF. IF YOU EVER WANT TO SEE THE GREATER THINGS OF GOD DONE IN YOUR LIFE, YOU NEED TO START TRUSTING GOD AND GIVING, AND GIVING DELIBERATELY, ON PURPOSE, SYSTEMATICALLY, MAKING IT A LIFESTYLE, NOT JUST A ONE-OFF THING THAT YOU DO WHEN YOU'RE IN TROUBLE. YOU NEED TO COMMIT YOURSELF TO DOING WHAT GOD'S WORD SAYS. I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY, BUT NEXT WEEK I'M GOING TO CONTINUE THIS. AND REMEMBER, I'VE GOT THIS BOOK ON FINANCIAL STEWARD, SHIP. I ALSO HAVE A STUDY GUIDE THAT IS THE SAME MATERIAL MADE SO THAT YOU CAN TEACH OTHER PEOPLE. I HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S ON THIS, AND WE ALSO HAVE THESE MATERIALS IN SPANISH. LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU INFORMATION ABOUT HOW YOU CAN RECEIVE THIS, AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET THESE MATERIALS AND RECEIVE THESE TRUTHS. TO ME, I MEAN, TO PARTNER WITH ANDREW WOMACK MINISTRIES IS JUST GETTING THESE TRUTHS OUT THERE. YOU WANT TO PUT YOUR MONEY AND YOUR RESOURCES AND YOUR EFFORT WHERE OTHER PEOPLE OF LIKE MIND WANT TO PUT THEIRS. IF IT CAN CHANGE OTHER PEOPLE'S LIVES, LIKE IT'S CHANGED MY LIFE, THEN I WOULD BE JUST SELFISH TO NOT GIVE BACK AND AND TO SHARE THIS TO THE REST OF THE WORLD. JAMIE AND I ARE HERE JUST TO THANK YOU SO MUCH FOR BEING PARTNERS WITH US. I TELL YOU, WE ARE REACHING AROUND THE WORLD. I REMEMBER WHEN JAMIE AND I WERE IT. I WOULD RUN THE SOUND WHILE SHE WAS DOING THE PRAISE AND WORSHIP, AND THEN SHE'D COME BACK AND RUN THE SOUND WHILE I WAS PREACHING. WE DID IT ALL OURSELVES. NOW WE HAVE SO MANY PEOPLE HELPING US, AND IT COULDN'T HAPPEN WITHOUT YOU. IT'S VERY TRUE. WE'RE VERY THANKFUL FOR OUR PARTNERS AND WHAT THEY'RE DOING, AND YOU'RE GOING AROUND THE WORLD, TOO, AND EVERYTHING THAT THIS MINISTRY DOES. AMEN. SO WE JUST WANTED TO SAY A SPECIAL THANK YOU 
And uh, we love you. And every good thing that is happening through this ministry, you're going to share in every one of those rewards. So God bless you. Thank you for being a partner with us. Andrew's complete teaching titled Financial Stewardship is available in either a CD or DVD album or as a book or companion study guide. Also available is the Financial Breakthroughs DVD, which includes six true stories of people that experience the freedom of turning their finances over to God. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount. Or you can get the Financial Stewardship Package. This package includes the book, study guide, and your choice of either the CD or DVD album, as well as the Financial Breakthroughs DVD. This package has a catalog value of $115, but you can get it today for only $80. Also, Andrew would like to make available his redesigned Living Commentary Bible software. Download your copy of Andrew's Living Commentary and start studying through the Bible with Andrew today. The Living Commentary is available for both Mac and PC for a gift of only $120 exclusively as a download at awmi.net. The individual topic highlighted on today's broadcast is available as an audio CD for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. I'd like to invite you to come to our Women's Arise Conference. It's November the 7th through the 9th. I'm not going to be there, but some of my best friends, Carly Terradez, Pastor Sue Sheriff, Pastor Sheris Johnson, and Dorothy Brown. That's James Brown's wife. I tell you, she's become a great friend. These are some powerful women. You'll be blessed. It's going to be a great conference, November 7th through the 9th. Women Arise in Woodland Park, Colorado at our Caris facilities. You know, I've got great news for those of you who've been wanting to partake of Keras, but you just can't move. You can't seem to uh, find how to fit it into your schedule. We now have what we call e on this little iPad, and you get all of the first year courses here. There's 39 courses, eight hours teaching per course. So that I think is 312 hours worth of teaching. It's loaded on here so that you don't have to have an internet connection. It comes with headphones, wireless headphones, and this way you can take advantage of the first year of Keras curriculum, whatever your situation is. And you can interact with our staff. You take tests. They know where you are in this process. It's just a great way to take advantage of it. Check it out, eCaris.